Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to hit climate science, get some eye candy from James Webb, check the tropical storms and seismic activity, and less than 24 hours from now, CME impact and solar storm conditions are afoot. We're eyeing that impact and checking out the last 24 hours on our star. Mostly quiet day. We reached back up into M-class flaring range this morning, likely due to the incoming sunspots. There have not been any further eruptive events targeting Earth, leaving just the double filament snap from two days ago. The sunspots we're watching closely this week are just crested into view on the incoming limb, and in a rare sight, these sunspots appear to be directly on the solar equator. In about five or six days, they're going to be the most Earth-directed sunspots since the last sunspot cycle. We'll be watching closely. The corona hole situation is developing as well. Strong and sizable southern opening turning in. Don't forget it shouldn't be too long until the big opening rotates back into view, and that might actually be the leading edge of it. We'll see. Of course, the number one thing we're watching in space weather isn't on the sun. It'll be here at Earth sometime in the next 24 hours when the CMEs launched by the filament eruptions arrive. Level 2 solar storm conditions are expected by NOAA forecasters and the aurora are likely to spill into mid-latitudes during the peak of the storm if that is the case. Eyes on the solar wind telemetry this evening and overnight. Top quake of the last day on our planet was actually the five-pointer in San Diego. It was the only magnitude five event of the whole day. Southern California shakes as the rest of the planet goes quiet. Speaking of earthquakes, the 7.7 super sheer seismic event on March 28th cracked hundreds of miles of the fault in Burma, causing tremendous lateral motion. Multiple meters, and folks, this is just in the north-south line. There was also uplift and subsidence. Up next, we're checking in on the two tropical storms straddling Australia. First one is about to attempt to make landfall in the northwest, already delivering a good bit of rain. Meanwhile, on the other side, that cyclone is dancing southward along the island chain towards New Zealand. Eyes on both these systems over the next 48 hours. Quick eye candy up next, NGC 1514, the hourglass nova remnant with the central star still alive to go boom again one day. It's a recurrent nova system, and the new James Webb shot makes the past images look like child's play. The detail here is pretty amazing. Lastly, folks, we have spent 14 years hammering home the solar forcing, cosmic ray forcing, and their interplay with Earth's magnetic field in the realm of external natural climate variability here. They're coming at it from the other side, saying they do an even worse job at pinpointing the internal ocean variability factors. They want to cut back the human blame for climate change in a big way. And folks, that means this push to end the anthropogenic climate narrative is advancing from both sides, the sun and the ocean which also plays into EDCO from Ethical Skeptic on X. You should be following me there. Folks, tomorrow the next issue of Observer Review comes out. It's the best way to stay updated, best way to review the month's top stories. And the members page gets you instant access to two years worth of issues and special presentations. It's actually now more than all three of my books combined, and it is less than $7 link below. Don't forget there's a ton happening at Observer Ranch this summer. We've added blacksmithing days, tier one energy and light work, pole shift conferences, prepping days, and any way you want to stay, we're going to make that work. ObserverRanch.com. Can't wait to see you. Greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.